Many people the world over are becoming more overweight and we're seeing more diabetes and more heart attacks and more diseases related to obesity and overweightness. And it doesn't have to be. Hello graceful viewers and welcome to today's Healthy Living where we are focusing on the issue of food addictions. Do you crave to drink high sugar soft drinks and intensely desire to eat sweets like cookies, candy bars, donuts and cakes loaded with unhealthy refined sugars? Have you experienced constant yearning for cheese? Did you know that eating meat is addictive? Why is it some people cannot stop consuming these foods, even if they have decided to quit them? It may not be simply a lack of willpower, as these foods can have an addictive quality, the same as tobacco and alcohol. Eric Stiess, a researcher at the Oregon Research Institute in Oregon, USA, used brain imaging to study the physical reactions of people who were about to receive a chocolate shake versus a tasteless solution. The brain of those about to receive the shake released more dopamine, a neurotransmitter similar to adrenaline, than when they actually were consuming the shake. In other words, their body was more excited before they tasted the shake than when they actually drank it. This phenomenon is similar to other addictions in that the brain is conditioned to demand more and more of the craved item to achieve the same effect. Miss Robin Tutor, an experienced vegan Australian naturopath, has noted this phenomenon with her clients. People don't normally describe it as a craving, although I suppose plenty of them do experience it as a craving. Usually the, the ones that I find are most common are people crave cheese, they crave sweets, you know, lollies. In 1981, Eli Hazem and his colleagues at Wellcome Research Laboratories in Research Triangle Park, North Carolina, USA, found traces of a chemical that appeared to be morphine in samples of cow's milk. Upon further investigation, they concluded it was morphine. How did morphine, a highly addictive opiate, enter the milk? Research has shown morphine is actually produced by a cow's liver and may appear in her milk. Studies have also found that the digestion process of casein, a milk protein found in the milk of mammals, creates a great number of opiates called casomorphine. According to Dr. Neil Bernard, a vegan physician from the US who is the founder and president of the non-profit group, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, in nature, these opiates produce a calming effect in infants and enhance the bond between mother and child. The degree to which casein fragments can enter the adult bloodstream and impact the brain is still unresolved. However, the consumption of large amounts of dairy products, especially of cheese, which contains a high concentration of casein, may be a factor in cheese addiction. Cheese consumption can lead to chronic conditions such as cardiovascular disease, arthritis and migraine headaches. Cheese has a high concentration of saturated fats that can increase one's low-density lipoprotein, LDL, or bad cholesterol levels. Those with high cholesterol levels typically experience a buildup of plaque in the coronary arteries or atherosclerosis. If enough plaque accumulates, the arteries can become blocked, thereby causing a heart attack. In addition, studies show that eating cheese and other dairy products may also increase the risk of ovarian and breast cancer in women and prostate cancer in men because it increases the levels of insulin like growth factor 1 or IGF-1 in the body. IGF-1 facilitates the growth of cancer cells. 
Dr. T. Colin Campbell, a respected nutritional biochemist from the United States and author of the critically acclaimed book regarding the benefits of the vegan diet, The China Study, has stated, IGF-1 appears to be a very good indicator of cancer risk. In some countries, the scale of sugar consumption is absolutely astonishing. According to the US Department of Agriculture, in the United States, over 68 kilograms of sugar and other sweeteners are consumed annually on a per capita basis. Bridget Mars is a herbalist and author from the United States who believes a raw vegan diet can cure addictions. She says we should avoid refined sugars like white sugar or corn syrup. I've written a book called Addiction Free Naturally. People do something to elevate their blood sugar level, it goes up and then it drops. And then you feel like down in the dumps and so you need to do it again. But what we need to realize is sugar and refined carbohydrates are at the roots of a lot of the addictive behavior. And if we would just saturate our beings with more superfoods, more wild greens or even more dark, dense, leafy green vegetables, get more alkaline, really say no to the refined sugar and get our sweet from fresh fruit, from naturally sweet vegetables, we would be nourishing ourselves. When we return, we'll further discuss the addiction to refined sugar as well as other foods. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Healthy Living, where we are exploring the topic of food addictions. Research suggests that some people may become addicted to food in the same way we may become dependent on alcohol or illegal drugs. Food addiction is a disorder where one keeps craving and eating a certain kind of food or foods which are harmful to the individual. Some people lose control of their eating, not because they lack willpower, but because they are addicted both in a physiological and or psychological way. In her lectures on health and nutrition, vegan dietitian, nutritionist Anne-Marie Roy of Canada warns people about the consequences of consuming refined sugars. On va expliquer tantôt c'est quoi le sucre, mais où on voit la qualité des sucres? Sur le tableau de chiffres ou la liste des ingrédients? La liste des ingrédients. Alors, le sucre blanc, c'est quoi? C'est produit à partir de la carte. Et là, on traite avec de la chaux. On épure avec de l'anhydride carbonique et de l'anhydride sulfureux. On décolore avec du sulfoxylate de sodium. On clarifie avec du noir d'os. Ça, c'est des eaux de vache calcinées à 1200 degrés Celsius. On déshydrate avec de l'alcool isopropylique, c'est-à-dire notre alcool à friction. On déshydrate aussi avec de l'acétate de sodium et finalement, on replanchit encore. Alors, c'est ça du sucre blanc. Le sucralose, le Splenda, qu'est-ce que c'est? C'est du sucre blanc mélangé avec des atomes de chlore. Alors, on appelle ça du sucre chloré. Alors, c'est encore plus transformé que du sucre blanc. Et le, fruit, le fructose ne vient absolument pas des fruits, mais vient du sirop de maïs qui a été modifié génétiquement. Donc, la plupart du temps, le maïs, les sous-produits de maïs sont traités, euh, sont modifiés génétiquement. Alors, quand vous voyez fructose, c'est un OGM. Et en plus, le fructose, ce qui est particulier, c'est que quand on en mange, c'est très difficile de contrôler notre appétit. Alors, à long terme, ça nous mène à des problèmes de surpoids. Alors, ce qu'on ne veut pas sur une liste d'ingrédients, pas de sucre, pas de sucralose, pas de fructose, pas de sirop de maïs, pas de cassonade qui est du sucre blanc recoloré avec de la mélasse, pas de rien qui finit par hausse. Ce qu'on veut, c'est des sucres de bonne qualité, sirop d'érable, du concentré de jus, des purées de fruits, des choses comme ça. Hi. 
High daily sugar consumption significantly increases the risk of diabetes and pancreatic problems. It is also responsible for bowel diseases, poor dental hygiene, arthritis, obesity, and many other illnesses. Meat is also addictive in nature. British researchers found in a study that opiate-blocking drugs can effectively reduce the attraction of meat to people. According to their research, using such drugs reduced the study participants' appetite for salami by around 25% and reduced their tuna consumption by nearly half. Dr. Joel Fullman is a vegan US physician who is an expert on nutrition. He now describes how people get addicted to certain foods. People try to diet, they try to cut back on calories and eat less food, and most of the time it doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is because the quality of the nutrients they're consuming are not adequate. In other words, they're eating a diet with so much processed foods, and so many animal products, and so much sugar, and so much salt, and so much you know, um, soda drinks, and things that aren't healthy, then they try to eat less. They keep craving to eat more food and they, because you become addicted, you become a food addict. I call this toxic hunger. And toxic hunger means gives people a raving desire to overeat. And they try to two hours later after they just ate, they already start to feel shaky and weak again. They have to eat again. What I'm saying is the poor nutritional quality of their diet and all the unhealthy foods they're eating causes them to be, get, become a food addict. It's like if you're drinking 10 cups of coffee a day, or you're smoking cigarettes, and you try to stop smoking or stop drinking, you'll feel sick, you'll feel ill. Well, people eat so unhealthy that they try to stop eating, they feel ill. They can't tolerate not overeating, otherwise they don't feel well enough. How can we overcome dependence on unhealthy foods? Dr. Foreman provides some practical suggestions. So trying to be healthy and trying to lose weight is not just about eating less food, it's about eating more of healthy, high-nutrient foods. Eating more of the right food is the method in which you could more comfortably eat less of the wrong foods. When you eat a diet with a larger amount of fruits and vegetables, especially green vegetables, and beans and berries and nuts and seeds, it lowers your appetite. And then when you're not eating food, you don't feel shaky, you don't feel weak, you don't feel irritable, you don't feel stomach cramping, you don't feel headachy. Dr. Neil Bernard similarly believes that in order to overcome food addiction, one needs to eat healthy, nutrient-rich foods throughout the day. Eating enough food will help one ensure that the appetite-taming hormone leptin is maintained at normal levels in the body. In addition, he also encourages people to exercise regularly, take enough rest, and to seek support from friends and family. From his professional experience, a low-fat vegan diet helps people end the desire for harmful foods. Another recommended tip for overcoming food addiction is to eat as much fruit as one desires before each meal. This method also helps reduce the cravings for unhealthy food. We would like to thank the experts featured on today's program for their invaluable perspectives on food addictions. May we all adopt the tasty and delicious organic vegan diet in order to always enjoy the best of health. Generous viewers, thank you for joining us on this edition of Healthy Living. Up next is science and spirituality of the noteworthy news. May heaven's love and light be with you forever. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash HL.